started Make Life Fun podcast because I needed more fun in my life. When I became a mother, I, for some reason, just put on this like high ponytail, mom jeans, and nose to the ground. I wasn't having fun. It wasn't until I started having fun that it started becoming easy. Fun and mental health go hand in hand for me. I've been in this mental health game my whole life. <laughs> and I am so lit up to like help other people. I'm so lit up for other people to experience this because it's what my wish and my mission is for every woman is to find safety within themselves because it took me a long time to get here. Hello and welcome to Make Life Fun. Today we have the incredible Jennifer Beaumont on the podcast. She is a revel intuitive. She is here today to talk to us about leaning into your intuition and listening to her own voice. Jennifer, thank you so much for being here today. That's my real life. So. Yeah, and that's what we're here to talk about yeah. is real life, the real mamas. And I'm so happy you said yes to doing this and getting on here and chatting. Me too. I'm excited. Yay, so good. <laughs> so what does your day look like so far today? Oh boy. I woke up early. I drove uh, my oldest child who's 14 to a robotics competition in Park City, which is about 40, 30, 40 minutes away from Salt Lake City, which is where I live. So early morning. And then I went back to sleep, <laughs> which yes. I usually, I know I usually don't do that, but it just decided that I was excited. So you needed it. Robotics yeah. competition. That sounds really cool. Yeah, I, I asked him last night, he had a thing last night too, and I said, what what exactly do you do? Like, how do you, I mean, you're building a robot or something, right? So, but I don't, other than that, I don't really understand. So I guess they do code and then, I mean, I must sound so, I'm such a, like, so out of it when it comes to that kind of thing. Yeah. Me um, either. I didn't even but, know yeah. it was a thing. <laughs> yeah. So I stalked your face or your Instagram this morning. Oh. <laughs> you have some beautiful posts. But oh, what really caught me. my eye was I loved when you were talking about how the whole nine to five gig people are. Oh my gosh. <laughs> 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 Yeah, I almost erased that post. I almost deleted it because I thought, okay, do I sound, you know, you want to be kind to everyone. You want to be appropriate. And I thought, does this sound like really rude? But I just, it came from, um, and I know that we kind of operate in the same circle. So maybe mm -hmm. you have some of this in your feed too, but just this constant message that a nine to five has to be soul sucking mm -hmm. a regular job has to be horrible it has to be not your calling it has to be all of these things and i just got tired of it i just mm -hmm. saw the last one and i thought that no i'm just gonna say something because our country our world is built on people doing jobs that may not be their soul's calling mm -hmm. and that's fine i mean it used to be that people go to work come home do whatever they wanted to do mm -hmm. and that doesn't mean that you shouldn't follow your soul your soul's calling or whatever's you know your lights you up <laughs> right uh, but i there are people supporting my my mother is a nurse she was a nurse my whole life and my dad was a pilot and before he was a pilot he was a paramedic so mm -hmm. my brother was a police officer people work people mm -hmm. have you know people support our whole society so some of us can do other things well it touched me because i was just thinking because when i read that i instantly thought about my mom like her dream was always to she kept saying when i was little like i'm gonna open a restaurant i'm gonna open a restaurant oh. or i'm gonna like cook my food because it's haitian food and that you can't get anywhere oh. <laughs> anywhere i've ever been i haven't been able to find like haitian food so she always like growing up she would take it to church and people would just encourage her encourage her but there was nobody there to like show her the way get mm. her over that gap right so the fact that you brought that up kind of spoke to my soul this morning because it like had me thinking of my mom because mm. now she's a custodian and she's helping like clean the schools mm -hmm. and that is something that is needed yeah my grandpa did that for a while he was a printer like for a newspaper and his family moved and he didn't like that was the job he could find mm -hmm. so I think there's so much honor in work like that mm -hmm. and value and I just don't I think people should be careful what they say mm -hmm. about work <laughs> mm -hmm. I agree that's why yeah that's why it touched me so much so I would love for you to tell us about yourself I guess a little bio I am from 
where you are, which makes me so happy that just anyone is there. I love <laughs> Idaho so much. I grew up on a farm. I like a horse farm with dogs and cats. Not really a farm. We didn't make anything. <laughs> My parents still live 35 minutes outside of Boise towards the Oregon border. And my grandmother had a dairy farm in Oregon right across the border. So mm -hmm. I grew up on both. I mean, just roaming and riding horses and the wildlife. And I'm always sad that I live in a city now and I can't get to that as often as I'd like. What's even more interesting than that is that I, from birth, as long as I can remember, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And it was be a dancer. I saw The Nutcracker on PBS with Barishnikov when I was two and a half and I cried the whole time. And my mom, who is very tough and strong and all of these things said, what is wrong with you? And I said, it's just so beautiful. It's just the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And so the next year she took me to the Nutcracker and the same thing happened. Mm. And I just told her that it just touched my soul and I couldn't think of anything else that I'd ever want to do. And then that's what I did. I did ballet every day wow. until I was 17. And then I went to the University of Utah and got a bachelor's degree in ballet and was just totally obsessed with it until I finished my degree and then decided that I couldn't do it anymore because mm. it was soul sucking, <laughs> as the nine to five says. It was just, a, it's a really difficult environment and mm. you're really hard on yourself. I mean, perfectionism and dance go mm. like they're the same, you know, beast. But as it would happen, I started doing modern dance, which I had done in college a bit, but, and then had a whole career in modern dance up until I had my third child at 38 years old. Mm. So I have four kids, ages four to 14. I live in Salt Lake City mm. and I don't know, I guess I should tell you about my jewelry stuff too. <laughs> tell me everything. Okay. I'm just curious. When I was younger, I worked at Starbucks. That's That was in my post. It was the most wonderful job. I mean, it was so fun. Of course, it's hard to serve, be in the service industry, but the friends I made and the experiences I had were just, I wouldn't trade them for the world. And danced and taught, of course, everywhere, studios and universities and things like that. And then when I had my third child, I was looking, I'd always liked antiques and I was looking for an antique ring, like a band, a band, like a wedding band. I just had this idea. I was looking online all the time and then started looking at little shops and I thought, wait a minute, like I found this one or I found this one, but I don't like it. Maybe I could just resell it. This is like seven years ago. And then, so I just did it. I just started an Etsy shop. I had like three rings. I had nothing. I started going out to different shops to find them and eventually built that into a kind of a huge business. The last couple of years with COVID have been less or just I've taken it back a bit, but built that online business and then now have decided or have gone towards, and I guess this is like the whole point of why I'm here and I'm not even mentioning it, mm -hmm. <laughs> gone towards more working with intuitive things mm -hmm. because as a teacher, as a dancer, as someone who's sourcing things for people, they would just show up. Like mm -hmm. someone would say, oh, I, I'm really looking for this. And then I would think about it and it would just show up for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I guess manifesting is the word for it, but I never like it was fun and it was easy and it wasn't for me. So it wasn't stressful. Do you know what I mean? You know how when you're trying to manifest something for yourself, <laughs> it's, re it's really, it can be really difficult, but because it was for someone else all the time, it was just like this game. So where I am now in my life to go back a bit when I was a child, you know, I told you how I watched the Nutcracker and I was mm -hmm. just crying and crying because what was there for me was the soul. When I see dance or when I dance myself, mm -hmm. it's just pure soul. Like it feels like touching the divine. It's timeless. And especially when you get into different kinds of dance, like improv improvisation. And there's just this feeling that there's no, there's nothing else like it. You know, there's absolutely nothing else like it. So that's why I wanted to be a dancer. That's, you know, that, just that feeling, getting into that feeling again and again. And as a teacher, when I teach dance, it's the same thing. I mean, there are steps and everything, of course. Um, I have a couple <laughs> degrees. I have a master's degree in modern dance. So I, you know, did all the schooling and everything. But I never really cared about teaching people the steps because what I care about is when someone thinks they can't do something or someone is struggling with something and you 
help them through that. And then suddenly you see their spirit mm -hmm. shine, their spirit and their body come together, you know, in that moment. And when mm -hmm. I saw that, or when I see that as a teacher, I teach an adult dance class now. But when I see that as a teacher, it's just like, there's nothing better. You know, there's, there's nothing. nothing better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's nothing better than seeing mm -hmm. that. So when I started the jewelry business, I just, it was mostly just fun. But the same thing happened to me. You know, the same thing happened like, oh, I could see someone, you know, burst into tears because I had found their grandmother's birthday and their mm -hmm. grandmother, you know, had passed away that earlier that week or whatever, you know, something like that. One, one of my favorite stories is I found this engagement ring and it had the date June 11th on the inside of it. And the girl who ultimately ended up buying it had had the number 611 on her bulletin board since she was in junior high. And she never knew why. She just wrote them down. And then, you know, 30 years later or something. Anyway, it was crazy. And also, she's a wonderful person. She That was her second wow. engagement because her first husband had passed away when they were really young. And I was always using the shooting star emoji all the time with her, like in our messages. And then she told me that her husband who had passed away, she told me his name meant shooting star. So it's just like this, like, you know, Connection. yeah, but coming to today, I've always been doing intuitive readings or psychic readings or whatever you want to call them for 20 plus years mm -hmm. and at some point in the last couple of years it was just like why am I doing what I do in a dance class when I don't want to give someone a grade for their spirit? Why am I running around trying to find jewelry, even though that's really meaningful for the person who's getting it? That's not what I want to do. So then there just came this point a couple of years ago that was like, do what you do, just do the thing. Mm -hmm. You don't need any legitimate avenue or storefront or whatever to offer this thing that you have. Just tell people, I can help you, you know, I'm still working on that, on that one. But so that's where I am now. And that's where we found each other through my reveal Instagram. Anyway, and yours. That's it brings sweet. me so much joy. No, it really does. Which I guess is the whole point, right? <laughs> Thank you. That means a lot. That is the point. To make it fun. Yeah. I just love your story. I love how you were talking about being in the wild because I am all about like that wild child, carefree. Oh. Like I've lost that, right? Me too. And you know what? You're not far from it. You're in Idaho. I mean, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna make you go to my mom's farm and you're gonna take your son and he's gonna see horses. Oh my gosh, <laughs> he's never seen horses. Oh, it's so oh, she even has ponies. She has like oh ponies my gosh. too. Yeah, I've lost it too. And I think I think it's a little harder in the winter to mm -hmm. capture that. I was reading something lately about kids and how boredom really stirs the imagination. Boredom mm -hmm. is really an impetus, you know something that makes you creative mm. because you know when you're a kid and your mom was like go outside and you went outside and you figured out something to do you know mm -hmm. you made plays area out of the lawn or whatever it is you <laughs> did but kids and I mean all of us these days I think that's true for all of us don't you that we mm -hmm. have you know there's always something to entertain us there's always mm -hmm. something to do there's always you know, I mean, and here we are in our digital world, like talking to each other and it's great. We can even see each other. I mean, that's so great. But there is just this loss of quiet, I think. Mm -hmm quiet is what I miss sometimes mm -hmm. in this world. The fact that you brought up winter and it brought me back to my childhood, like played and imagining. Like I used to play school <laughs> with my siblings, but I was always the teacher. Of I'm course. The of course. And that was, you know what? I wasn't even going to ask. I was like, you were the teacher. Yeah, of course. <laughs> So that's what that made me think of because it's like, yeah, when you're bored, you just come up with stuff. You don't even have to think so hard for it when you're a kid. But when you're an adult, it's like you are filling every single space with something. Yeah, especially, I mean, I know you're a mom. I know we're both moms and that's you're either preparing something for your child, cleaning up after your mm -hmm. child or worrying about your child or, mm -hmm. you know, are they okay? That kind of whatever. And then if you have a business too, okay, now we both do, you're constantly kind of attending mm -hmm. to your clients and making sure everyone's okay. There's, it's important to take space and just mm -hmm. turn off everything and, you know, be able to kind of let your nervous system relax. Absolutely. So yeah, talking about nervous system and like self-regulation lady could do you have anything that you do particularly for that oh my gosh i have to say the last couple of years i have just been so bad at it so 
bad. So I used to always dance, of course, and, mm -hmm. and teaching fulfilled that, even if you're not doing, because you still have to teach people. And my groups that I love to teach are kind of beginner adults mm -hmm. or teenagers. I guess the short answer to your question is moving. For me, mm -hmm. it's moving, because I've realized in this last couple of years, because all the dance classes shut down, I'm terrible at doing like online yoga or online Zoom dance. I'm just not good at it. It's <laughs> not, I don't know why, I wish I was better. But just, I realized, that just yesterday actually I realized that I just have kind of tightened up you know and I think the state of the world has just made everyone constrict mm -hmm. you know just sort of like and you, you can see me right but I'm just like <laughs> squeezing my body because it's just like a like and then you kind of hold your breath and even if you're not especially afraid or even if you're in really good health or even if you know you're able to kind of bliss out on politics or health or whatever <laughs> you still have that it's still in the air you know mm -hmm. and everybody still feels it so I think for me it's just moving and that can mean a walk outside mm -hmm. that's really helpful I'm so lucky I live right next to this trail it's called Parley's trail and you can just pop right out I mean it's like when you feel stuck like that it's just any movement is really for me and it feels hard at first doesn't it because mm -hmm. you're just like oh I don't know if I'm safe enough to move but then once you get going you know I saw your post yesterday it's so beautiful <laughs> once you get going you're like oh that feels so much that better feels so, so good and yeah, yeah movement I was talking earlier this week with Masako about this whole movement thing. So dance for me has been an important part of my life that I've completely forgotten about. I forgot that I used to dance. I forgot that it used to be fun to just let go and surrender and let my body do what it wants. It's just now that I'm slowly reintroducing that to myself and it's just lighting me up. The creative juices are flowing. I'm like getting my sexy back. Like it's just. It's just so much goodness and just moving your body and allowing yourself to move. I totally agree. It gets the energy moving. I think you yeah. even said that the other day and I totally agree. And you know, I want to touch on something you just said because it's so important. So I, you know, I do intuitive reading hour long or half hour long. Sometimes hour is better because it's always goes over when it's half hour. I can never keep it. There's just stuff and I keep wanting to tell them. I don't do like, you're going to walk outside and like, you're going to meet someone or you're going <laughs> to, I mean, occasionally some like that'll come or like you're gonna win a million dollars people are always like tell me what's gonna happen next week like I do this Q&A and people will always type in what is my next week or what does my next month look like and I'm like no 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 like I'm not a fortune teller what I can do is I can see you kind of as a soul I can see energy patterns I can see like, someone will have big sort of holes all over their torso. Mm -hmm. Someone will have a dark spot in their stomach. Someone will have, I can just feel that they're tight or that they've been crying or, so I kind of have, it's like kind of this like energy, you know, prescription that I'll end up giving them. What is so important about what you just said is every reading I've done in the last couple of years, or actually every reading I've ever done, but especially in the last couple of years, is something like that. Some, I'll see someone, one of my favorite ones, I saw, I saw this guy bending over something and like doing something Something really intricate with his eyes and his fingers so I'm describing it to him because I don't usually I don't always know what it is so I'll describe it to the person and he was like oh my gosh I love tying flies for fishing I used to have a whole setup in my garage and I haven't done it for a couple years and I don't know what made me stop but like that is the thing that just brings me peace it brings me calm it brings me so much joy I don't even have to use them or sell them so you know this is one person and then someone else I see you know like you I might see you moving or someone else I see walking by the ocean you know like I saw one of my clients with like a bucket hat like a beach hat you know and walking by the seaside and kind of browsing these little shops and I'm describing it to her and she's like I just have been dying to go to this specific little town near my house but I was afraid that my boyfriend would be offended if I went by myself or it's a waste of money to spend a hotel for yourself all these things so like in my experience and this is really my mission everyone knows everyone knows the thing that will heal them you know what I mean especially it, everyone knows whatever it is that lights them up and no one else can say what that is for them and no one else can tell you and when I see it sometimes I don't even see it clearly I just describe it and people mm -hmm. people but people always know they're always like I know exactly what you're talking about and I'm like yes it's because it's for you mm -hmm. it's for you but the, the cr thing that's crazy to me and I'm definitely unpacking this still because it's me too like why do we deny ourselves 
why do we forget? You know, you said you forgot to dance and mm -hmm. I've forgotten to dance this last couple of years. Mm -hmm. I was dancing the other day. And how can someone who's been dancing, you know, since they were three years old, who had like spent their whole education and career <laughs> in dance, how could you forget? But I did. Do you know what I mean? And I do. So it's like we, we do forget what heals us. We don't always, we deny ourselves that mm -hmm. thing. And we think I don't have time. I don't know. I don't deserve it. You know, the thing we think a lot is, oh, that's silly. I don't want to spend the energy to do that. And I don't, anyway, this is like my, like I said, this is my life's mission because I want to know why we forget, you know, I want to know why we deny ourselves because we, every person has the healing within themselves. The prescription is right there. I read something the other day is that we almost feel like we have to punish ourselves. Like we have to punish ourselves. And so I think when you're speaking that, that's the thought that's coming to my mind is that in, even if we don't know it, we are punishing ourselves in that forgetting because yes. yeah, that's the thing that just popped up in my brain. And I think that's so true is we don't think we deserve to feel that good. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. That is exactly the thing. And it's not conscious. It's not like we're consciously walking around thinking, I don't deserve to feel happy or I don't deserve mm -hmm. to feel good or I, I'm such a bad person that I, you know, should feel bad. It's not that. It's just that there is this, I wanted to say, especially women, but I think I'm going to pull that back and say, mm -hmm. no, I think everyone puts themselves last, mm -hmm. like the last on their list. Mm -hmm. And I think even people who appear selfish, this is my theory, even people who appear selfish, that selfishness is them putting themselves mm -hmm. last. Do you know what I mean? It's them fighting against themselves. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why we all do this. I think a lot of it has to do with culture. I think some of it has to do with a disconnection you know, a disconnection from spirit and from guidance and whatever you want to call it from God, from, you know, whatever you want to call it, because it's that, that I reveal to people in my readings. And every time they know, they know exactly. They mm -hmm. say, Oh, I knew that. I knew that. I think the most common word that I get feedback wise is confirmation. And so it's just like, I'm just reflecting, like, it's just a mirror. It's just mm -hmm. a mirror for what you already know. I think the denying ourselves or punishing ourselves comes with not trusting ourselves mm -hmm. or not trusting that the thing that made you, you know, whatever you believe that is not nothing. It's not nothing. It has to be at least stardust, <laughs> right? <laughs> the thing that made you is still in you and it's a part of you and it's wise. So you are it. But that's something you run away from almost. There's so many times that we haven't been true to ourselves. Like it comes back to that, again, trusting yourself, being true to yourself. And so when you hear that little voice, I know at least for me for the longest time, when I heard that little voice, I was just like, that can't be right. It just doesn't feel right, right? It almost yeah. feels uncomfortable. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Or I think another thing that happens, we are so in our heads, you know, mm -hmm. we're so cerebral and, and add technology to that. And mm -hmm. we're just like swirling around, you know, like balloon heads to detach from our bodies all the time. So if you get some kind of intuitive hit, if you get some kind of information, what we all do is we run it through our head first mm -hmm. and our head says to us, no, that's dumb. Why would you want to do that? Or why would you A, B, C, or D? You don't need to do that. Why would you do that? Whatever. The more you do that, the harder it is to mm -hmm. trust those intuitive nudges. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, if this is, if I ever start a podcast, okay, I'm like terrified of <laughs> all technology. And actually I've been terrified of speaking for a while. So this is big for me. But if I ever start a podcast, it's going to be about when did you have an intuitive hit that you followed and like what happened from it mm -hmm. or what mystical experience can you share with me that you can't explain mm -hmm. because i live like do you have one like <laughs> I, you, I mean, you have a million right but like is there some, <laughs> like two 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 right if you had to pick one right now that was just like tell me a time when you followed your gut and it turned out better than you could have ever expected. Yeah, it's that five month abroad trip that everybody thought I was crazy and I was losing my mind. And I thought I was losing my mind for going to Bali, Indonesia. Like there was just like this call to like go, to go, to go. Oh. I just, it felt like it wasn't gonna work and nothing was working. Like it was, that was the wild part. It's like I booked the ticket and then my passport wouldn't come because all my papers are in Haitian oh or in Creole. And so mm. they could read it. And so then I had to get it translated and the passport didn't come until the week before I left. Oh my gosh. <laughs> 
I didn't even think it was going to happen, but it just worked itself out. Yeah. And that trip has brought me to where I am today. Oh. Like I would not be this version of Josie, like that healing that took place because mm -hmm. I traveled thinking I was like running away, like going away mm -hmm. from myself, like going to find fun. But what I found was wherever I go, I'm taking myself. That's so so true. In a sense that I found my essence, but I didn't know it yet. This is all just, oh. I'm just now learning this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, on that trip because I was all alone. I didn't have to answer to anyone and I could listen to my heart. I could follow my intuition and I started to trust myself again. That was mind blowing. Like I would have never done that on my own. Like that mm -hmm. was a shove from somebody right. way greater and I believe in God. And so that was a shove from God saying like, you need to do this to get to where you need to go. Mm -hmm. You're being guided. Yeah. Guided. I'm going to share a short one with you. And yes, it's please. so much more minor than that big transformational story you just shared. <laughs> oh, no. But it's one of those things where like God timing or whatever, like there's just no other explanation. I had been feeling a couple of years ago, it was my 40th birthday, my friend and dance partner for years. We always go to brunch or do something, you know, I had been thinking about, you know, the makeup clinique, mm -hmm. you know, that like makeup and you know how they have like when I was in high school, my mom and my sister and I would sometimes go and, you know, you get the free bag or what, you know, free bonus time. Yes, yes. So I had been thinking about that and just thinking to myself, every time the thought came up was like, that is so weird. Like I have like four pieces of makeup that I've been having for 25 years. Mm -hmm. I don't buy makeup. It's like only drugstore. I'm not a, anyway, I was just thinking that's so weird. That's so weird. But I kept hearing it and I kept thinking it. And so I looked up if it was bonus time, it was bonus time. There's a Macy's like kind of close I asked Nathan I said hey do you want to go to brunch at the mall because I kind of want to go to Macy's for this makeup and he was like sure sure honey whatever so we go to the mall we go get the makeup it, you know I get the. I'm like this is just weird I ended up giving it to my mom actually it was like face cream because I wasn't even going to use it and so we get the makeup and we leave the store and then we're walking by the gap and he's like hey do you want to pop in here and I said yeah of course I take two mind you it's my birthday okay it's my 40th birthday I take two steps into the gap and one of my very best friends from Starbucks is in the gap calls my name she lives in Germany she's lived in Germany for 15 years and she's like Jen Jennifer and I look up and I'm like Nadia and then we both I mean I just like it, and I was speechless like tears in my eyes she had come her mom lives her family lives in Salt Lake she had come just for the day or mm -hmm. like for the weekend and didn't tell anybody she and her mom decided to go to to this mall for this moment so it's just anyway I, I, I'm gonna stop putting the words to it but every time I think about stuff like that yesterday I went to go source some jewelry and I was in a totally different part of town than I normally am because of the robotics thing mm -hmm. I decided to pop in this shop I was gonna buy this band thought it was a little expensive shied away from it I was gonna buy something else that fell through. I went back to the band, I buy the band, I look, it has my grandmother's birthday inside of it, who passed away five years ago. And it's like the best, she was the best human and she's the best angel there ever was. Mm -hmm. So stuff like that, it's just like, you don't have to know the why. My grandmother used to say this, we're just too heavy down here. Like it's just too heavy. The matter is too heavy to understand the why, because you could never in your wildest dreams put together all those steps mm -hmm. of what you were going to find in Bali or meeting Nadia, you know, friend that lives thousands of miles. You would never think that, right? Mm -hmm. But what we are taught is that you should think it through. You should plan it through and you should think of every pitfall that you may encounter or every worry that's going to come up or every good thing. We don't even think of the good. We think of like the mediocre, right? We're not trying to think of the good. I could talk about this all day, every day. Yes, you're speaking right to my soul because it's so <laughs> true. It is. Like you said, we're heavy down here. Since I've been dancing again and since I've been doing this healing work on myself for myself, I'm starting to like feel this alignment, this guidance that feels there's so much ease here. Like mm. there's so much like fun here. Like, and I was like, this has been available to me like this whole time. Well, we forget, we forget. And I think you brought up a really important point right now, which is also something I believe so strongly. The fastest way to get back into alignment is through your body. 
And we're taught the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. We're taught that you should think it, you should read it, you should meditate. I mean, meditation is beautiful, but you know, like we should do all these things and they're all up here. Mm -hmm. But really, it's like you have this body. That's Mm -hmm. what creates life. Like that's Mm -hmm. what brought you here. Why would you not? It's like you got to go down to get up. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's what I always say. Oh, yes. Which is true in dance too. If you're not grounded on the bottom, even if you're on a point shoe in ballet, like if you're not grounded on the bottom, mm-hmm. you're not going to be able to balance up top. So my word for 2022 is bloom. And you oh. just said you got to go down to get to go up. <gasps> right. Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect. And that is just so true because I'm starting to look at my down where mm-hmm. I've had so much shame, where I had so much guilt where I had so much judgment and so much anger and so much frustration with myself. And I'm looking and starting to like look at it in a whole different eye. Like I'm looking and I'm seeing the good. I'm remembering the good. And I didn't always see the good. Like my eyes always, my heart always saw the bad. Mm -hmm. And there was, there's so much goodness in that, in the, the hard parts in that dark place that I was so afraid to look. But also I've found recently, as I've done more readings and people have reached out to me, they'll specifically share with me something horrible that happened to them that I've already been through. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, like let, just this week, someone was telling me how they lost a baby. It was such a random thing. I put in questions in my story or do you have a question? Mm-hmm. And she asked a question and I thought, I'm going to reply to this privately because, you know, it seems so personal. And then she started telling me all this. So she started pouring it out and I was able to speak to that, you know, and I was mm-hmm. able to kind of talk her through. She was really young because no one was, no one was giving her the space to grieve. Mm-hmm. Like they were like, it was early. It doesn't matter basically. And I was like, Oh, no, it matters. You know, it matters matters. so much. Some of the things that I've been through that, you know, like you said, some of the things we've been through that are dark or hard or just downright heartbreaking, you know, devastating, Mm -hmm. you wish you didn't have to do that. Or you wish you hadn't had to do that. Or you wish you hadn't chosen that path for yourself or whatever. Mm -hmm. But really, it's like that makes you so it makes you a richer person. And it Mm -hmm. makes you able to speak to people who are there, you don't have to figure out how they feel, you know, Mm -hmm. how they feel feel and so you're able to help them from that place or at least just say you'll be okay you know Mm -hmm. you'll be okay so it's I think it makes you so much more not that I want to volunteer for anything (laughs) again (laughs) like I'm the ones is enough but you know like it makes you a more compassionate person it gives Mm -hmm. you a broader base it gives Mm -hmm. you you know back to the metaphor of blooming gives you deeper roots Mm -hmm. so you can grow taller absolutely and I know there's so many people especially the mamas that are listening to us right now that might be going through that hard rooted place and that hard rooted place like we can speak on it saying like I'm looking now and I'm seeing the good but when you're in it motherhood brings every every emotion (laughs) doesn't it I mean even in your body it's so interesting I mean that's a whole that's another podcast Mm -hmm. right from the minute you're pregnant you know like your cells are Mm -hmm. totally you're different human. Yeah. Well, I just want to, I feel called to like speak to that person that's listening that probably just heard me talk to the fact that I can now look at that place where I was grieving and I had those feelings and now I'm good and I'm light. You know what I'm saying? And it's happy and I'm, but I want to speak to them and like, say, you're going to get through it. Right. Like, Mm -hmm. Like, I want to say that to that mom listening because I just, I don't know. I feel called to say that because as mothers, we do. We take on the weight of the world. Yeah, we do. And you know what I want to say, as you were saying that, I think about this a lot with my intuitive business. I'm not on the other side. I'm still right where everyone Mm -hmm. else is. Do you know what I mean? I still have days I wake up and I feel horrible about myself Mm -hmm. or I feel totally disconnected from Mm -hmm. spirit or I feel completely lost and I feel like I've made every wrong decision there is or like I can't hear guidance at all or, you know, I'm in a funk or my energy for manifesting is bad, (laughs) you know, Mm -hmm. all that stuff. Like, I mean, that's a particular challenge to get through and, and reassessing who you are and everything. But there's also like, there's no arrival. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? It's a constant journey. Mm -hmm. I mean, that sounds so cliche, doesn't it? Yeah. (laughs) But it's true. 
you never get to this point that you're like, oh, everything is smooth sailing, you know, mm -hmm. because you'll have ups and downs and you'll have days where you feel completely connected and completely in faith and looked over. And then you'll have another day where you just feel so heavy, as my mm -hmm. grandma said, she was so wise. You just feel so heavy and you have to get through that day too. Yes. And again, going back to that movement and giving yourself that permission to move that stagnant energy. Literally, you just have to have that one thought of like, okay, I'm going to try on the music i'm gonna mm -hmm. just put on music and then just let your body kind of do the rest yeah or right? i think walking is so good too because everyone can do it i think mm -hmm. a lot of people are afraid of dancing which is you know like another one of my missions I've got a lot of people are afraid of moving but walking is movement you know mm -hmm. what i mean cleaning your house is movement mm -hmm. you know like doing laundry pulling the laundry out of the dryer and putting mm -hmm. that's movement so mm -hmm. anything i feel like that I mean, you really said it, you really hit the nail on the head when you said like getting the energy moving, mm -hmm. because it's really I think it's so important. I think that like I said, the last few years, I've just felt kind of like curled up in a ball, mm -hmm. you know, like bracing. That's mm -hmm. the word I hear bracing for the next like thing, the next whatever. But if you just take a breath, you know, you got to exhale. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's important, right? Mm -hmm. You've got to exhale because we all just kind of breathe in this like shallow, you know, this like right here, but it should be, you can't see, but it should be all the way down. Yeah. Any move that, move it through, move it through mm -hmm. any way you can. I think any it's so important. Can. Yep. And I love that you said there's movement and just taking out the laundry. If you're just make it consciously known to yourself, like I am like, just be in that moment of grabbing that laundry mm -hmm. and that in itself could be a like de-stressor and bring you back to now. Yeah. Well, you know, my grandmother, you might have guessed she's my idol. She had 12 mm -hmm. children. She was a nurse in World War II in the Philippines. I mean, she was just like the most badass woman you've mm -hmm. ever known. She was so spiritual mm -hmm. in this very earthy, amazing way. She started a dairy farm when she was like 60 and worked on it till she was 90. Oh. But I think about her all the time because I think her name was Cecil, which is a man's name, but whatever. Mm -hmm. Cecil didn't work out. Do you know what I mean? She didn't like yoga. She didn't schedule in her yoga. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I mean, I could right. do more of that and I should, but she cared for 12 children. Mm -hmm. She mopped the floor twice a week without fail you know what i mean and i so i i have this picture of her in a in laundry mat from like the 50s which i love but i think about that all the time like people of yesteryear they just moved you know what i mean they just moved or if you i mean out not in boise where you are but like out with my mom my mom moves all day long she moves water she moves hay she moves i mean if you if you grow your own food if you have a garden you move all of that is movement i think so often we're like we have to exercise in this certain way or like you said turn on the radio turn on the not the radio turn on the turn on the music and just move you know mm -hmm. like we all are thinking it has to be this prescribed thing or this carved out time but actually any movement in your body is good any i completely agree 100 <laughs> percent oh this conversation is like i loved it <laughs> oh, i so appreciate so you glad. Jennifer, for being here <laughs> and speaking to us about listening to your guided system and moving and allowing yourself to do that for yourself that's like my biggest takeaway is like move your body and mm -hmm. listen to your guidance and know that you can trust start to trust yourself again yeah. right? ask you know what i i tell people and myself too ask yourself what do i need right now mm -hmm. and then listen for the answer and if the answer is get an ice cream sundae then get it you know what i mean if the answer is listen to a song you haven't heard for a while if the answer is write a letter you've been thinking about writing just listen for the answer because you know it it's in you it's not outside of you oh brilliant yeah, yeah. thank you so much i would love everyone to go and celebrate you follow oh. you and be a part of your world so where can they do that Oh, you're so sweet. So my Instagram, that's basically all I have at this point. I'm very low tech. I'm working on it, but I'm low tech is at reveal dot intuitive just on Instagram. I also you could also find me this is a little easier to remember at blue moon bits. Mm -hmm. That's my jewelry and it's a bigger account it will come up probably easier. So you can trace your way back to my reveal account that way. Yeah, so. blue moon bits that name is I love it. 
thank you that that came to me and i was i said no like 10 times why blue what i love blue but i was like bits bits but then i just kept it and so many people have told me that name like really caught me i'm like it wasn't me it was not me at all you were in alignment you were guided and you listened so yeah so thank you so much for being a part of the make life fun podcast and sharing with us today thank you it has been fun Thank you so much for listening to the Make Life Fun podcast. I am so filled with joy to have you here. If this show resonates with you, I have a gift for you. If you're feeling stuck, this freebie may be just what you need. I believe that if you know your why, it helps you get unstuck quicker. So to connect with your heart and know your why and figure out what it is that is most important to you, get the freebie. It's in the show notes. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast to get notifications each week. To support the show, you're invited to leave a tip in the tip jar. Information for all this is in the show notes. Sending love and light to the spirit listening to this today. Be blessed.